everyone, it's Ross. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting topic, uh, at least to me. We're going to be talking all about growing fig trees in the ground in, uh, in colder climates. And I was very lucky this past weekend to visit my friend Big Bill in Lancaster. We got to see his property. Um, never been to his nursery. That's also, you know, his home is also his nursery. He grows a lot of figs, guys. He grows... Uh, like about 200 varieties of figs. Um, he's also eaten a lot of figs. He's, you know, his property is huge. You see, you see that golf cart there? I mean, that's what you need to get all the way back there. Um, he also grows lots of other things like persimmons and pawpaw, medlar, lingonberries, raspberries, blackberries, honeyberries, you know, you name it, jujubes, he's growing it. He also sells it, right? If he likes something, you know, like persimmons and figs, um, he'll sell it. And that's what he does at his nursery, his home nursery, is he sells all kinds of plants. You can find him on Facebook at Off the Beaten Path Nursery. Um, I'll put a link in the description for you guys. Um, you know, he really does a nice job of making things affordable, um, sorting out the good from the bad. You know, he sells all kinds of interesting things, too, that you can't really find. You know, this is a wasabi plant here, lingonberry here, pawpaw seedlings and pawpaws. You know, here's some figs that he harvested. And, you know, here's the greenhouse in which he propagates his figs and all the other potted plants that are for sale. So, you know, the guy really knows his stuff, too. He's been growing figs for a long time, and this is his nursery. Uh, you can... You gotta get you gotta get in contact through him through this Facebook page. You know, you can either send him a message or call him. But um, really, uh, really well done. The guy really knows his stuff, and it's all affordable. Now, I want to show you guys his property here and what's going on because there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Um, I'm very happy I went. And a lot of what I've been preaching in the past, really the past year, um, has been kind of solidified by what Bill is doing here. Um, a lot of what growers should be doing in zones 5 through 7, maybe even zone 8, with their figs is, is growing them in a way that um, will basically give them a lot more heat. Um, with more heat, you increase the metabolism. Increasing the metabolism increases the growth, increases the, the fruit set. Um, you know, makes the fig tree just a million times happier, guys. And the easiest way for someone in zones, you know, five through eight to do such a thing is actually not to grow it in the ground. Uh, would be to actually grow it in a container, and that's what I do mostly. But recently I've discovered you know, there's better ways to grow them in the ground that would make it a lot more worth it to me. Um, that will definitely beat out any container, container fig, and it's just a lot less work that way. Uh, Bill here, we're going to show you guys, he's got 94 fig trees in the ground. Um, he's been here at this property now for a year. Uh, this will be his second winter coming up. Uh, he planted all these trees in the fall before this last winter here. So about this time last year, he was planting all these trees. They all died back to the ground. And, um, you know, he didn't even plant full-size trees either. He planted these as three gallons. So I just want you to keep that in mind as we go along here and as we talk about this. So I think to go back to what I was saying is that we we want a lot of these trees to get a lot of heat. And the best way to do that is to kind of replicate a container, right? If, uh, if a container has the most heat, right? If a container can ripen here in zone seven, the earliest varieties with no head start, will ripen here August 1st. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good date. Right, it's a lot. It's a pretty good season of figs if you can get your figs to ripen by August first. Um, we basically are trying to replicate that with our in-ground trees. Um, 
So here's what he's doing, right? If you look behind these trees and you see his greenhouse, this was a this is a sunken greenhouse, about three to four feet deep. And when you excavate this, because you got to dig down three to four feet deep, you got a lot of excess dirt, a lot of excess soil. So what he did was he put it up against the side of the greenhouse and kind of made a nice berm around it. Kind of actually on a little bit of contour, I would think. I don't know how exactly he did it. But um, he did this for a reason, right? He wanted to plant fig trees on this mound. Um, by planting them up higher, you're kind of exposing them a little bit to the cold, right? You would think. Um, you would think that because the soil is higher up, these trees would get blasted by colder temperatures. Well, frost settles on lower points. Um, water also settles on lower points. Um, when you raise things up higher, you know, similar to a raised bed or a container, you're actually giving them access to more heat. So this is exactly what Bill is doing here, is that he's protecting the root, the base of the roots, right? You know, this this mound of dirt, this berm here, is actually quite a nice heat sink. Um, it'll release a lot of heat during the, uh, the nighttime, you know, absorbing a lot of heat during the day. Also, the earth is just warm. So if you can keep the roots above 20 degrees, which is really not a problem, um, in a situation like this, you know, you're know, you pretty much golden. Um, at that point, even if your tree were to die back, let's just say your tree were to die back, well, there's enough energy, enough heat, enough high enough of metabolism for these trees to really go nuts the following year. So this is exactly what Bill has done here is that he's planted them. Oh, this is Bill right here. But um, we can fast forward a little bit. Unfortunately, the audio of this video never came through. I would have loved to have showed you guys this video from start to finish. It's really a great source of information. But none of the audio really came through. And this is, Bill's basically explaining right now why he did this berm here and what the, the benefits of it are. You can see down here on these, he actually put down some black plastic to add even more heat. Um, you know, heat is the name of the game, right? If we're trying to get these trees to replicate a container, we have to significantly increase the amount of heat we give to these. And notice these figs, guys. These are young trees. These all, every single one of them, I was told by Bill, when he planted them last fall, none of them made it through the winter. They all got died. They all died back to the ground, resprouted, and by some crazy miracle, these trees are huge. What is the explanation to that? Well, it's the heat. So even if these things die back, the thought process Bill and I both share is that we need to get these trees going, right? We need to get these things growing strong so that they can put out lots of fruit. There's a hardy Chicago type right there that's been fruiting for a while for them. You know, this berm really, really helps. So this is one way of doing it, okay? Now, I think there's a couple of different ways you can do it that, you know, for myself, I'm growing them against structures, right? I'm growing them against my house, a lot of them. Um, there's also, uh, when I visited Mario in Connecticut, he's growing them against his house. He's in six. He's probably in zone six. Six uh, A. He's even colder than Bill. He told me he was getting a negative ten, negative fifteen degrees. Um, and what he's doing is not only using the house, but he's also surrounding the base of these trees. There's only a small slit for the trunk of the tree in the concrete. The rest of it is covered with concrete. There's no water that gets to them, barely any water that gets to them. There's no fertilizer that gets to them. These guys are just on their own underneath the concrete, um, thriving. So here we can see Bill is doing this a slightly different way. And this is another way of doing it that I think if you combine every single thing that myself, you know, planting them against walls and structures, 
you know, using concrete that Mario uses. That guy, he was a builder uh, before he retired, and he knows, you know, he knows how to pour concrete. Bill, on the other hand, here, in this style of planting, is doing it slightly differently. And um, he actually, I think we both are of the mindset that mounding them up is would be better than this. Um, you know, using a combination of these things that I'm mentioning to you guys is going to yield you the best results. In this particular planting, and he's got, you know, probably 70 or so trees like this. This is where the majority of his trees are and how they're planted is that they have the black plastic along the ground. What does that do? Heats up the ground, right? He also has, if you notice here, he's got rocks along every single planting of every single tree. And I'm sure he's going to get more rocks to cover these guys. Some of them he's got a full circle around them like a campfire. Um, but these trees, man, they've done a, a magnificent job this summer with all this heat that they've been given. Those rocks you know, is another heat sink, just like the house, just like the berm. It absorbs heat during the day and releases that stuff at night. It's just, it's just wonderful. Um, you know, and here's Bill basically describing each of these, the planting style of these trees. I mean, look at the fruit set on this. This is no joke, guys. I mean, these are some really beautiful looking trees for how young they are. They've only been in the ground for one year. And look at the fruit set. I mean, that's just nuts. It's it's all attributed to the heat. So I think we've beaten this point to death here uh, about the heat. <laughs> I think we've, we've talked about it enough. Uh, I think it's just so exciting to me that this is more possible of an avenue and you know with doing these things it's, it's not just enough to plant them deep it's not just enough to you know do you know do none of these things I think if you're gonna plant a fig tree in the ground in zones five through eight I think you should be doing a combination of these things guys I really do I think it's a great idea I mean here's even a new tree that you planted that has got the plastic, got the rocks, you know, anything that he can do to give these guys heat. Um, you're about to see here that, you know, some of the trees did well, did better than others. Um, I'm not kidding, not every single tree I looked at had fruit on it. This tree over here, this is a long D out he's showing us that's really tall. It's been growing like a monster. I mean, it's probably eight or nine feet tall, loaded with fruit. It's been ripening. Um, really a special fig for our area. Does well in the cold. And you know what, even though Long de Out does so well, Long de Dute, sorry for all those French speakers out there, but Hardy Chicago, guys, is the, the top choice. And somebody recently posted on Facebook um, they asked one of the Facebook groups, one of the fig growing groups, they said, what's everyone's must-have varieties for in-ground culture, uh, USDA Zone 6B? And I responded because this has really been the truth of the matter for such a long time. In 6B, the only must-have variety is Hardy Chicago. The rest are unreliable. Even in 7A, it is tough for Hardy Chicago. That's where I live. Now, if you're going to wrap them, that's a different story. Otherwise, you'll get total dieback each year in 6B. You probably will, because when temperatures hit zero degrees, the vast majority, you know, 99.999% of figs will just not be able to handle zero degrees Fahrenheit. They just won't. Um, so they'll die back to the ground, re-sprout from the base the following spring, and some of them, if they're early enough, can actually fruit that year. Only the earliest varieties succeed in that scenario, I said, which are your Ron de Bordeaux, and Proof Celeste, and Floria, and Hardy Chicago types. You know, so it's really, really been um, a struggle with these trees. 
getting them to work. And I think now that Bill has shown such good success, and even myself, I've been doing this now. Uh, this summer, I've you know I've had them now in the ground, planting more in the ground this fall. You know, I'm going to be planting a lot more this uh, this upcoming spring. You know, it's very obvious how much better these trees are performing than some other trees that I've had in the ground for three to four years. Um, trees that have been in the open, don't have any heat sinks attached to them. They're planted deeply. You know, they come back every year. They survive, but they don't thrive, right? The one of the last things we talked about in this video, and I think this is the only la the last important point here I want to touch on, is water. Water and fertilizer. I asked Bill, do you water your trees? Do you fertilize your trees? No. And I'm pointing here to the black plastic because the water goes right through that black plastic, if some of you guys didn't know. You know, it heats up the soil, but it's also porous. It also provides a nice um, covering for the soil. So it's really nice to have that so the sun isn't beating down on the soil at all times, you know, it keeps in some moisture, but it also lets the moisture through and keeps that heat in there. And because Bill and I live in an area that gets 40 inches of rain annually, we have usually very wet springs, very wet falls. The summer can dry out a little bit, but for the most part, you know, these trees are subtropical, guys. When they get some size, when they get some age to them, their roots go out really far, pretty wide, and they can very easily find water you know, no problem. So watering them is actually, in in our opinion, you know, we talked about it in this video. I, I really wish I could have showed it to you guys. It's actually a detriment to these trees. You know, they grow too much with excess fertilizer and excess water, and then they don't fruit. And then by the time the, the frost comes around in November, they are not hardened up. They're not lignified, and the first frost comes in, and hits these trees pretty hard and by the time it's you know you're super late in the winter time you know the tree's probably dead so it's really important guys that uh, we're doing this we're not watering our, our trees um, in this zone you know I think you could probably get away with you know after your tree matures a little bit you really only need about 20 inches of rain annually for a fig that's it um, I know a guy who grows his figs exclusively in a greenhouse. You know, there's the only water that he gives them is from his own water. There's no rain involved at all, and he controls that perfectly. Gets insane fruit quality, and he he waters them 20 inches of rain annually, and an extra six to flush out some salts in the winter time. So that's it. And that's really the video, guys. I mean, uh, we could talk about varieties. You know, I've I've kind of done that in other videos. Your biggest bet, your biggest success is going to be Hardy Chicago. You know, Long D Out is another one that's really good. Ron de Bordeaux, Floria, Pastillieri, Improved Celeste. You know, what else? Um, Probably Blue Celeste, LSU Tiger, LSU Purple, LSU Champagne, Toronto Unknown. You know, the Trace Displace probably has the ability to fruit after total dieback. Rassi's Northern Persian Unknown. So, you know, with this strategy, it's really guaranteeing that the earliest varieties that you have are going to be able to, to fruit every year, no matter what. You know, the goal would obviously be getting them through the wintertime, but the varieties I just named are very early so they should fruit no matter what and um, yeah I mean this is this is in my mind one of the more exciting things that's been going on in uh, the fig world at least in someone for that you know that's in my zone so I kinda I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys learned something I hope when you guys plant your fig trees you kinda take some of these aspects that we've included in this video and do them yourself um, I promise you, you'll have immensely more, immense, immensely more, uh, you'll be immensely more successful. Um, it really does make a difference. You wouldn't think that something like black plastic or a couple rocks on the ground would really do all that much, but it certainly does. I mean, I didn't think when I first 
heard about this, you know, and kind of put forth the idea to the fig community, it really didn't occur to me that this would really work as well as it as it has. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, we can go back. Um, or I'm sorry, we can go back. You should all take a visit over to Bill's Nursery, guys, on Facebook. He really is doing things right. He's a hobbyist at heart. You know, he's a really nice guy. Great prices. I don't know what else you could ask for. So that was the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you all later. Take care.